In this video series, we are going to work on the underpainting of this dragonfly in ink tents or watercolor. If you watch all four videos in this series, you can walk away with your own finished painting. I'm Abigail and I make speed paintings and drawings, tutorials, lessons, and demonstrations designed to help you improve your art skills. So if you're new here, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my new weekly videos. Now on to this lesson is the reference photo and sketch outline. Feel free to take and print a screenshot of these to reference throughout the process. All the materials I am using will be listed in the video description for you to refer to. To start this project, we freehand or trace our sketch outline onto our paper. If you would like help tracing for this purpose, check out this video. Now that I have the outline transferred, I tape the paper down to a board or other sturdy surface to keep the paper from warping as I that is done, I mixed my paint. I am using the Inktense blocks for this, so I will be using them like watercolor pans by lifting some of the paint off with a damp brush and moving it to a palette where I can alter the color further. I'm going to mix a brown. Later, I will mix a light green, dark green, and yellow too. So it's up to you if you want to mix all of these now or later. It's okay if your paints dry before you have used them. You can always reactivate them with water. Once I have finished mixing my colors, I can start to paint. I'm going to start with the background. For this area, I am adding a layer of brown to the whole section, except for the areas of highlight. For the highlighted areas, I add more water to our paint mixture to create a tint of our brown, and then apply it to those areas. If you are unfamiliar with what a tint is, it is basically just a lighter version of your original color made by adding white to it. However, in this case, I don't add white to lighten it since that would make the paint opaque. Instead, I add more water since that will lighten it while keeping the paint translucent. If you would like to see more information on tints and other aspects of color theory, consider checking out this video. After that, I let it dry and then I add a layer of water to this whole section in preparation for using the wet on wet technique. If you are unfamiliar with this technique, it simply means that we are adding wet paint onto a wet surface to achieve an out of focus result. For more information on this technique and many others, check out this video that explains over 20 watercolor techniques that you can instantly implement. Back to this project. Once I finished wetting this area, I added another layer of brown while it's still wet. Now I'm just mixing up my light green to use, but you don't have to if you already did it earlier when we mixed the brown. You just have to reactivate it. Now I add this green to this bottom leaf. Don't feel overwhelmed that it doesn't resemble a leaf yet. It's not supposed to until later. This layer is just to help us separate the leaf from the background so we have an easier time focusing on those areas individually. Speaking of the background, I now fill in this small section with brown before adding light green to this leaf. Feel free to pause the video at any time to reference my application and really enjoy the process. If you ever run out of a color you mixed, that's okay, you can always mix up more like I am doing now with a light green. Leaf, I mostly want to avoid getting any green on the dragonfly, except for the wing, since by painting on its wing, it will help to make the wings seem more transparent later. Next, I add a small amount of blue into our brown to make a less saturated blue for our dragonfly. Once this is done, I add it in these areas. If it is easier for you, you can use a smaller brush for this. Feel free to take a break if you need it. This is a small area, so that makes it a bit harder. It's not anywhere close to impossible though. All right, now I let that dry and then add another layer of green to the leaves. However, this time only to darken up the shadows. I start with this lower leaf. This leaf is shadowed completely by the one above it, so it's going to be much darker than that main one. All I do is add a layer of light green to this entire leaf. Then I move on to this main leaf. For this one, the shadows are a lot more defined, so they require a little more precision. Feel free to watch where I place mine as an example for you to do the same.
I do the same for this back leaf. However, since it's on its side, it has less divine shadows in comparison to the last. As those shadows are drying, I go back and add shadows to the main leaf that I may have missed the first time. Then I do the same with the back leaf. Alright, now that I can better see a separation between the background leaf and dragonfly, I can start to refine the underpainting more, starting with the background. I start by adding a layer of brown to the deepest shadows and then add a tint of that brown to the highlights. I do this to all three sections of the background, starting from the top and working my way down, so I don't accidentally rest my hand on any wet paint. After all those sections are dry, I repeat this step again, making the shadows even darker. Next, I add a layer of dark green to the shadows in the bottom leaf. While I wait for that to dry, I darken up the section of the background with another layer of brown. Then I add another layer of light green to the already defined shadows in the upper and main leaf. After that, I add a layer of yellow to all the leaves except for the lowest one. I'm going to make it more watered down than we did with the other colors, thereby making it more translucent. By doing this, I am able to alter the color without affecting the values. Since I'm using yellow, it will ultimately change the temperature of the colors beneath it. If you would like to know more about the temperature of a color, feel free to check out this color theory video that explains it further. After adding the yellow, I mix some blue and dark green together to make a cooler version of our green. Then I add this to the deepest shadows in our main leaf. After that, I gradually shift to dark green in the shadows that aren't nearly as dark in all the leaves. Next, I glaze light green over the bottom leaf. Then I add more yellow to the highlights. Lastly, I add another layer of brown to the shadows and just water to the highlights to soften the edges between the values in the background. That is it for this video, but feel free to check out my next video in this series where I show you how to refine the underpainting of the background. If you watch all four videos in this series, you can easily walk away with your own finished painting. Until next time, God bless.